Should you travel for IVF or egg freezing? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and fertility doctor. Today I'm talking all about traveling for treatment, having a fertility doctor or clinic in a different location than where you live. Certainly there are different levels of this. So you could travel to a different state. You could travel within your state. You could travel to a different country. And I'm going to give you my top tips if you're thinking about doing this or warning signs and essentially just helping you make the best decision possible. As always, appreciate you guys so much. So please subscribe to this channel, help spread our message. It exists so that more people can feel empowered on their fertility journey. I have to admit, I have a lot more patients coming to see me at Fora from other places that are not the Austin area. And even though this is exciting, I always want to make sure they are so prepared for whatever is going to happen because there's an extra layer of complexity if you are traveling somewhere else. I want to say that when it's time to get another opinion or to schedule a visit, because I have patients come to me for second opinions and I have patients come for first time visits. They haven't seen anybody, but they want to consider traveling because they want to be somewhere they trust. I think it's really important to understand that IVF is expensive, personal, physically and emotionally exhausting. It takes time. Having a clinic, a team, a doctor that you trust is really important. And there's a personal aspect there. I'm not going to be the right doctor for everybody. How my clinic communicates may not be right for everybody. And that's totally okay. So knowing what you need in a clinic and knowing how a clinic functions, those two things are really, really important. Reasons why people might travel or consider going to another place because they have moved because they like a doctor they met some other way because whoever is local to them maybe they don't like or they've had a bad experience or the wait time can be really long or sometimes they're looking for either an improved cost or an improved service and all of these reasons can be really valid but i want you to be thinking through what's important to you and your circumstance and nobody's circumstance is always going to be the same First thing, I always want to give a disclaimer because one thing that I don't believe in doing, and I know some of my colleagues don't either, or most of my colleagues don't, is give a plan with the idea that a doctor in some other place is going to follow it. Meaning we all view IVF and protocols really different. So you don't want somebody managing a protocol that they are not as familiar with. That's not going to give you the best outcome. And that's not what you want either. You want to know that your doctor knows what they're doing, feels super comfortable with the ins and outs of that plan. So if you came to see me and you were in town and you said, I had this online consult with XYZ doctor and here's her plan, that's not going to be something that I'm interested in just following their plan. Okay, we'll just do that. You should go see that doctor if you want them to make the plan. However, I always like to entertain, oh, you had a second opinion. They said something else. Let's talk pros and cons about maybe what they said and why I would or would not do those certain things. And patients will come to me and say, can you give me a plan that I can take to my doctor locally? And that's not something I like to do. I think it's important that if you're going to schedule a consultation with a doctor who is not local to you, number one, you must be willing to travel there. So a lot of us don't see patients who are not local in the office. That's great. You can have telemedicine, you can have easy access to that first visit, but you need to know that this is a place you would be willing to go to because if you feel comforted and trust that doctor in that clinic, you want to be able to travel there. So don't pick a place that you're never going to go, or it's going to be very hard to get to. That is not going to set you up for success and what you're looking to do. Number two, it is so important that you send all your records. So if you've had testing, if you've had treatment, especially if you're paying out of pocket, which a lot of times insurance can be very state specific. So if you're scheduling an out of state visit, you might be paying completely out of your pocket. So you want to have the best experience for that consult possible. So send all of your records that might take some backlog from you bugging your first clinic or bugging wherever the testing was done, but set that doctor up for success. Myself personally, I go through all your records. I go through your history before I see you. If you don't fill out that history form complete, if you haven't gotten records sent, I haven't had time to prepare the plan as well. Obviously we'll talk about the information you tell me, 
but you're paying for my expertise. That's really what you're paying for, my time and expertise. And I want to be able to give you the absolute most personalized, best information possible for you. So please do your due diligence, fill out the history, get all the records, give them everything you need. Number three is going to be to clearly state your goals. My goal is blank. This many kids do this as fast as possible. I'm okay with this or not with that. And really have an open dialogue about what you are looking to achieve. Number three is know what can be done locally, wherever you are, and know what can be done with where they are. And what can be done without compromising care or making it too expensive. Most people don't realize that the active part of an IVF cycle is two weeks at maximum. You can even shorten it from there once you really get going. So some patients, I let them do their baseline closer to home. They start their cycle if that looks good because a baseline is is pretty standard. It either looks at baseline or it doesn't. After though, we start getting to the monitoring. I'm pretty picky. I really want to try to see you, especially as we get deeper in there or have my clinic see you, have Dr. Skillern see you, because I want to know that those follicles are growing right. I want us to be responsible for the decisions and not using someone else's data. So now, how long do I need to be here? Clinics that see patients who travel in a good amount, we are so used to this. So we say this visit can be done either place. This is the time we want you here. It is typically 10 days, which isn't that long. And I'm lucky because we're in Austin, so it's a great place, but know how long that's expected to be. If you're doing a fresh transfer, if you're doing other stuff, it might be longer, it might be shorter. Are you at a place where you can go back and forth or is that going to be more stressful? So really think through what is the time, which visits do I need to be there? When do I not maybe need to be there? Is there a chunk of time I can go home or, or be somewhere else? Cost can be a huge reason why somebody goes to an outside location or somewhere not local. We are not the cheapest fertility clinic in town. After just building an IVF lab, it's so expensive to hire quality team members, have all the equipment. And often, just like in life, you pay for a certain level of quality or service. So if something is so much cheaper than everything else, my question is why? What's the compromise or where are they cutting that cost? This goes for overseas as well. A lot of patients will think about reproductive tourism, getting on a plane and going elsewhere. And I think that sounds really fun, but it's a big endeavor. And when you take in, you know, overseas flights and the cost of being somewhere else, potential language barriers or follow up with your team, IVF can be done differently in a lot of different places. So I think that there is a little bit of buyer beware. I don't like when my patients want to buy meds from overseas. I don't like when patients want to travel out of the country. It just, to me, maybe it's fine for the average patient most of the time, but you don't know when your cycle is going to have a less than expected outcome. And you probably don't want to be spending, you know, more money. I'm sure I see none of the patients who have great experiences, but I see tons of the patients who go somewhere else in an attempt to save money. And now we're doing cycles and they're just spending even more money finally being somewhere that they trust. And so at the end, I would say, regardless of where it is, how does that team communicate and what is going to be the process? Who does the ultrasounds? Is it your doctor? Is it an ultrasound tech? Is it a nurse who draws the blood? Do you have to go somewhere else? Who is telling you the results and how are you finding them out? Is it a portal message? Is it a phone call? Is it an email? If it's your doctor seeing you in the morning, are they updating you on how things are going? That's one thing we do that I love. So if you're traveling here, myself or my partner will see you, we'll scan you, we'll give you an update, a preliminary plan. When your labs come back, we'll give you the final plan. And if you're paying to get somebody's expertise and travel to go see them, you want to make sure you know the touch points and what the level of interaction is going to be with the team and which team members. Do you have a team of nurses or one nurse? So these are things to really think through. Who makes up the team? How do they communicate? Who does the procedures? Who does the monitoring? How are you getting your questions answered? What is the amount of time you need to be there? What can you do somewhere else? Is that potentially going to compromise outcome or not? And at the end of the day, just like you may 
date more people before you find the person you're meant to be with, you may have an experience at a fertility clinic or any doctor, and it's just not right for you. This is an important thing. It's your family journey and your fertility journey above anybody else's. So don't be afraid to get that other opinion, to consider looking outside just the clinic that's closest to you, especially if you get that gut feeling that maybe something just isn't a right fit. There's no hurt feelings in the fertility world. I have patients go to other clinics and I have patients come to me and that's all fine. So I hope this video helped you a little bit if you're considering traveling for IVF, some of the questions you may wanna ask and you may wanna think about. At the end of the day, I think you've gotta be prepared that it's probably going to cost you more money in the long run than staying local, but that doesn't always mean that it's a bad thing. Ask any questions you have below and I am happy to answer them. As always, you can get more questions and more answers on Instagram on Monday at Natalie Crawford MD. And we'll be doing another YouTube live very soon. Thank you, friends.